Hello everyone, today I'm going to share with you an extremely helpful file I've created for anyone interested in creating fantasy battles using my WarSim project. Um, this file is great for anyone who either doesn't have Microsoft Excel to aid in creating their INI files or for anyone who wants like a guide for more detail on all the variables that go into creating their own battles. Um, I'm going to have a link to download this file in the description but if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to uh, comment below. Um, first thing you're going to notice is the title. I have called it Fantasy War Simulator here. Um, I'm kind of getting tired of the War Sim title because it's sort of generic and I've seen it used elsewhere. And, you know, I just, I'm looking for something a little new. Um, I'm still not the best at creating titles for my projects though, so if anybody has any suggestions, please feel free to share and I will consider them. Um, so now I want to walk you through the PowerPoint. And remember this is available for you to download as well. So first if we look at our INI file, you'll see it's broken down into sections that are start that start off with this kind of a label and a bracket format. This first section is your battle settings it's where the um, label squads in brackets starts off and then we define each unit below. So a bracket at zero is squad zero and there's all the variables that apply to that squad. The bracket at one is squad one and all the variables that apply to that, etc. So first the PowerPoint covers the game setting or the war settings here under the squads bracket. Um, the layout of this PowerPoint is I'll show you the section of code we're looking at or variables we're looking at. Um, red text will show the variable I am def currently defining and then I'll give an explanation for it over here. So first, and I'm just going to walk you through an example battle on this PowerPoint. So I'd like to creating an example battle. So the, in this, power, this example battle I want to have three units so I set my number of squads to 2 and that's because we count from 0 so I have units uh, squad 0, 1, and 2 that's why my number of squads is 2 even though I have 3 next we define disbanding um, morale has not been incorporated yet though so I just leave this as a 0 for now but when it does get incorporated um, a value of 1 will mean that the units can flee from battle when their morale gets low enough Next, we define game speed. Um, unfortunately, it only serves to slow down the battle, not speed it up. One is normal speed. Two would make it twice as slow, or it would take twice as long pretty much for the battle. This is good if you just need to slow the battle down to take in everything that's happening a little bit better, if everything happens too fast or something for you. So I, I just keep mine at a one. Next we have the standard size and the standard unit size. Um, I'm going to cover standard unit size a little bit later on slide 14. But the standard size pretty much says, since I define this as 500, a squad that has 500 soldiers will be the standard size block. Um, if there's less soldiers it will be a smaller block and if there's more it will be a larger block. Finally in the, um, the war settings we have the blue and the red name simply just the name of the blue and red armies and there are a, a text string here but uh, try not to make it too long because it will be displayed so next in our INI file we will start to define each squad that partakes in this battle one by one so as I said before we'll start off with a bracketed number with a squad number in the, in the inside of the brackets you always start off counting from zero and incrementing by one and then below that bracket will be all the variables and how we define them for that squad. And also, as a note, I have down here anything that L ends in the LDR um, is like a leader version of that attribute. So here's the stamina for our units in the, in the squad, and here's the stamina for the leader of the squad. Same for the speed, the HP, etc. So first, I want to define the squad and the side squad is simply the name you choose so it's a text string 
I want to name it Rebels here. The side will be either red or blue um, with a capital B or a capital R and that indicates which army the squad fights for. So I'm going to make the Rebels on the blue army. Next we have the X and Y position which are the starting position of the unit on this simple coordinate plane here. So if the battle, if this was the battle screen, 0, 0 is the top left, 420X and 275Y is the bottom right. Um, placing the rebels up here in the top left kind of at position 50-50. And these are measured in yards, which matters when you're con uh, considering movement speed and range later. Um, next we have the leader name is another text string, so I'm just going to choose George here. And the troop count is the number of soldiers or troops or units or whatever you want to call them in the squad. So I choose 500 here. That means this squad is 500 rebels and it's um, 501 total if you include the leader, George. And then morale, I'm just going to set to zero for now because it hasn't been incorporated yet. Hopefully that's coming soon though. <coughs> Next we have stamina and speed. Speed is movement in yards per second. Um, I'm making this a cavalry unit, so I'm going to choose a value of 12. But if I had like a human foot soldier, I'd usually pick like a four, or like a three and a half or something. Um, stamina is a bit trickier. Um, a unit will deter decide to charge on an opponent if it, they're in range to use about 25% of their stamina and at the rate at which they use their stamina the best rule of thumb is if you want them to be able to do a full length charge for say 10 seconds before colliding with the enemy you would give them 8 times that amount of stamina so you give them 80 stamina so in this example I want them to be able to charge for 12.5 seconds so I give them 100 stamina now the distance they cover in that 12.5 seconds will be based on their movement speed so that's kind of how I can figure out about how far away they're going to start their charge from. Stamina is also important when you consider melee stamina costs and range stamina costs for using those types of attacks, as those will also drop stamina. And the lower a unit stamina gets, the less efficient they'll fight. Next, the max HP for the unit and the leader is simply their hit points. Um, when they get hit with an attack that deals damage, it will reduce their HP and when their hit points get reduced to zero that unit dies. Um, charge when the unit charges into a deadlock they will get a charge bonus applied to their melee attack um, for the first however many seconds of battle it's based on how long they charge for and it's simply just adding the charge value to their attack. Um, it's charge should probably be higher for like a cavalry unit or any other unit that's actually that has like a that looks for that advantage of charging into a, a, a deadlock and since this is a cavalry unit I'm giving a charge of a hundred if it was like a foot soldier or something I'd probably make it a little bit lower alright so next we're going to consider armor and damage values now there's two types of damage you have melee which is the damage per, uh, done by a melee attack and range, which is the damage by a range attack. And those get compared to armor when determining HP loss of an attack. Um, attacks have four different outcomes that are possible, and the damage is based on the outcome. So those, those calculations are shown here. Pretty much a miss or a blocked attack is no hit point loss, and the HP loss is um, based on damage and armor and whether it's a graze, a hit, or a critical hit. Also note that a hit has a, a minimum damage cap and so does a critical hit. So a hit will never do less than damage divided by 10 and a critical hit will de never do less than damage divided by 5. So this unit's always going to do at least 40 damage with a hit and 80 damage with a, ma with a critical hit. Or for ranged attacks, it'd be 60 and 120 or it'd be the, his minimums. But It'll likely do more damage unless the enemy he's attacking has like a whole lot of armor. And it just follows his formulas yet again. Next, we have the leader position. It can be a value of negative one, zero, or one. 
Um, one represents they line up in front of their squad or army. Negative one, they're closer to the back. They stay um, safer, and they try to avoid contact with the enemy. Whereas you know one's the other extreme. So a negative one would be less likely <coughs> to get kills or to see combat, but will also be less likely to be attacked and to uh, to take attacks or damage. And then one's the opposite, and zero is just like an in between. <coughs> now we're on to unit size and leader size. Um, the, how you define these matters very much on how you define your standard unit size in the global settings before. Um, so I like to keep mine at a five, and then if you have like humanoids or like standard human sized units, I keep them at about a five. And anything larger, I'd make it larger, etc. So, here's an example of how it works. I've drawn over here with these arrows. Pretty much, um, the biggest thing about unit size is if I have a thousand units attacking like 50, I wouldn't want them to get a thousand attacks off every second. It'd be like tw each guy's getting hit by 20 guys at once. That's not that's not likely to happen. Instead, each unit's going to be engaged by about you know up to five units in this example at a time that will have um, the opportunity to throw an attack at that unit. And I have a formula for that. So unit size times the standard divided by the target size. And you can just read more on that there. Next we have the um, melee attack and defense and the range attack and defense. They work similar, but in melee attacks you compare the melee attack versus the de melee defense. In range attacks you compare the range versus the range. And pretty much you simply divide your attack, divide it by your target's defense, do a little bit of manipulation to that based on stamina, morale, a few other things. And then um, you know, this is even where you'd add your charge bonus in. And then the value you get would be like an efficiency value. And in the back of the PowerPoint, I have these tables. Kind of look your efficiency up on this first column. And you'll see your chances of landing a miss, graze, a hit, or a critical hit. These are you know, estimates right here. And that's how that works. Then we have melee stamina costs and rate and the uh, the rate and then the same for range simply how much stamina is deducted when you perform the melee attack or the range attack and then the rate is the number of attacks per second so in this example i assume my units can perform two melee attacks every three seconds so two divided by three is zero point six seven and they're firing muskets so I'm assuming they're going to fire about three rounds per minute. So three divided by 60 seconds is 0 0.05. And, um, oh, okay, so, okay, I skipped a slide. And now this is finally the last variables are the range of the range weapon and the ammo. Um, so the range is the range in yards. Pretty much they won't be able to fire upon an opponent until they are in that range. And the ammo is just simply the ammo, how many attacks they can perform. Um, so other things to note, if you're not going to have a leader in a unit, you can leave the leader name blank. And just keep all the variables for leader at zero. And that should be the same as just not having a leader in the unit. And then same for range, just set your ammo to zero. If your range ammo is at zero, your unit won't be able to use range attacks. Um, it might be important to still have like a range defense unless you know they're just not able to try and evade range attacks at all. <coughs> so that was the creation of our first unit. Um, so in this example, I had two more. I just kind of show you the overall how I created those units here. Um, so this unit, the second unit is also Blue Army. I call them allies. Their leader's name is Nathaniel. Notice I gave them a different starting position. They're f a lot further down on the battle map. 
because the Y position is 250. It's a smaller army. And the, uh, so the biggest change when creating this unit, I made them pretty identical, but gave them less or lighter armor, which means an increased movement and um, slightly better ranged weaponry so the uh, damage went up the firing rate up, went up a little bit the range and even get, they brought along some more ammo then my final unit I created I notice I have a 2 here, I had a 1 for this unit I named them the Empire made them the red side they start off at about the same Y position as the first unit but on the right side of the map so I made the X value a lot higher um, I made it a large army, which actually in the, sim in the video I'm about to show you, I, I made it only 750. But they have a bit heavier armor and um, are a little bit slower, but still pretty identical. I'm trying to keep everything you know, a little bit balanced. And uh, their horses are a little bit weaker, so they have less of a charge value, and that's also why they're slower. <coughs> so yeah. I would simply take all of that and put it together like I have done here. So there's my settings. Here is my first unit. You can see I had to find it all here. Another thing I did in this for the simulation I'm about to show you, I increased the range rate a little bit to speed it up. Otherwise the simulation would take forever. But um, now that we've gone walked through creating that INI file, I'll just go ahead and show you the results so you can see it in action and here you go, you see good guys versus bad guys so there's the 500 plus the 250 plus the two leaders gives us 752 and then we have this army of 750 plus their leader gives us 751 now I press spacebar, the battle begins you can see our name where we entered good guys versus bad guys we entered rebels, allies, empire they're all showing up and you can see the starting position, there was 50-50, there was his um, Y of like 270, the X of like 300 over here. And now we have the ally unit came in and flanked. The Empire's leader has taken some damage. Just from the, the barrage of ranged attacks from both directions. And yes, so we created a battle. Notice the rebels have already used all ten of their ranged attacks. So they charged. Man, that Empire leader, he got hurt real early, but he's just not going down. It's a close one. And that last row was really hanging in there, too. Ah, oh, there we go. Man, I cannot believe how close this is. <gasps> what luck. <laughs> I ran this test a couple of times, and that leader did not last that long each time. There we go. Alright, it looks like a clear victory for the good guys. That's what I was aiming for. <laughs> That's why I changed it to 750 instead of 1000. But, uh, there we go. And, you know, as usual, here's our battle story. See so we can get all the details. And, uh, yeah, that's about all I've got to show today. So like I said, uh, the project will now be called Fantasy War Simulator. I will have a download link for this. It's straight to my, my uh, another box link. Um, and I also have a link to the War Sim, or now Fantasy War Simulator project, in the description as well. Um, you can email me if you have questions or post comments on my YouTube video. And um, I have another supplemental file I've been working on but I will tell you more about that when it's finished. Hopefully it won't be too long. And then, yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed.